Bioshock is a game that many would consider a masterpiece. Combining first-person shooting with basically spell-casting abilities, this game blew my mind when I first played it in 2007. And now, 16 years later, I'm finally gonna platinum this game. My plan is to attempt the platinum in one full playthrough, which means I'm going to need to play the game on the hardest difficulty and disable all the Vita chambers, which basically disables respawns, which honestly is no big deal because you can just save whenever you want, which I was doing constantly. There is a way to cheese this difficulty trophy, but for the purposes of this video, I'm going to play through the challenge as intended. The game begins with us getting into a plane crash in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Conveniently, there is a lighthouse nearby, so we swim towards it, and upon entering, are greeted with, in my opinion, one of the coolest quotes in video game history. No gods or kings, only men. We find a bathysphere and take it down to the bottom of the ocean. Here we are introduced to Andrew Ryan, who gives us another iconic video game speech and introduces us to Rapture, a giant underwater city that he created. After making our way through this beautiful introduction, we arrive at our location and are introduced to Atlas. Atlas wants to help guide us through Rapture. What a nice guy. I bet everyone here is just as nice. Oh, never mind. This guy is attacking me. After committing murder, we find a random needle and decide to inject ourselves with it. Don't try this at home, kids. Luckily, the needle only gives us electricity powers, and now we're ready to take on anyone that stands in our way. Atlas tells us he has a family in Neptune's bounty and would like us to help him rescue them. Atlas is such a great guy and has helped me, so why wouldn't I kindly help him? Using weapons I find along the way and the power of electricity, I take out any enemies in my path until I come across a little sister and a big daddy for the first time. I will eventually have to save all of these little demon children for a trophy, which means dealing Dealing with their big daddy bodyguards on the hardest difficulty. I'm sure it will be a great time. Damn, man. You okay or like what? What's the deal? Just hanging in there? You don't look too good. After one final big battle, I can finally escape the area to Neptune's bounty. Andrew Ryan is now aware of my presence, but I'm sure he'll leave me alone. And we got completed welcome. The player has successfully completed the Welcome to Rapture level. Yep, we're in it now, boys and girls. We're in it now. We are now in the medical pavilion. Upon arriving, I find a broken down flying turret. Once I hack it, I get two separate trophies. And we hacked a security bot. There we go. Another trophy. What's that one? Oh, it's just a successful hack. Performed one successful hack. There we go, two, tr two easy trophies right off the bat there, man. Now, the path to Neptune's bounty to get to Atlas's family is locked, and I don't have access to open the gate. Atlas tells us the only person in this area that has access is a Dr. Steinman. We need to find Steinman and get his access key. From here, I just fought my way through the medical pavilion and got a ton of trophies for just hacking things in the environment. Hacking is essential in this game. It grants cheaper prices at vending machines and unlocks safes that usually have a ton of valuable items and resources. As I'm playing through this game, I'm going to also be hacking every every camera I can, as once they are hacked, they will unleash an army of flying turrets at my enemies, which is amazing since I can just hide while the turrets do all the work. I'll also be hacking every regular turret I can because obviously it's better to have a turret shoot at your enemies than to shoot at you. Oh, I hacked a turret. Turret, help me. Oh God, turret, please. Yeah, <laughs> yes, get him, turret. Yes. This is the start of a long, beautiful friendship, turret. After basically hacking everything in the area, I find a shotgun and get attacked by waves of enemies. Oh god! Reload, 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 reload. Get out of here. Oh my god, oh my god. Chill out, lady. Anyone else? Anyone else? Once the shotgun massacre was over, I find Dr. Steinman. Turns out this guy is a huge psycho. And instead of just kindly giving us the access key, he opens fire on us. I guess we'll just have to get the key the hard way. Go, my machine friend. Attack him. Go, my little buddy. I'm gonna go this way. We're gonna pincer him.
Holy crap, he has so much health, guys. Oh my god. Die, you psychopath. Oh! Okay, I got this. Oh my god, he has so much health. Yes! Defeated Dr. Steinman. <laughs> he has so much health. Holy crap. Dude. With the access key now in hand, it was time to leave the area. But first, we run into Tenenbaum. She was the person responsible for these creepy little sisters we see walking around. And after having a conversation with her, she gives us the ability to save the little sisters and turn them back to normal. For the purposes of the Platinum Trophy, I'm gonna have to save every single little sister in the game. Which doesn't seem too hard, except all these little sisters are guarded by big daddies. I'm gonna have to fight every single one of these big daddies to save these little girls these giant monstrosities destroyed me a lot especially in the early game when i had barely any ammo guns or abilities no oh man if i'm not full health he just one shots me oh my god this is so hard already the thing is though, this game, at least the remastered version, seems pretty buggy. So these big daddies would just honestly get stuck a lot and instantly become easier to kill. Sometimes they couldn't enter certain areas or they would just get stuck on pillars, making them free targets. This kind of thing would happen all the time with these guys and it made this seemingly hard task actually easy. And once you get the firebolt with your crossbow, you can just melt these guys pretty easily. Either way though, they were still fun to fight and they would force me to figure out new ways to defeat them every time. Once we enter Neptune's bounty with Dr. Steinman's key, we are so close to rescuing Atlas's family, but a man named Peach Wilkins is blocking our path. In order for us to proceed, Wilkins sends me on a mission to research the spider splicers in the area. We do this by picking up a camera and taking pictures of them. Now, with this camera comes a ton of trophies for this game. Basically, if you take enough pictures of an enemy, you'll eventually gain damage bonuses and sometimes even hidden perks. I spent my whole entire playthrough snapping photos constantly until I maxed out every enemy in the game and got all of their respective trophies. This was kind of a grind, but it was super worth it, especially on this hard difficulty because the damage bonuses from the research helped out immensely. Once I took three photos of spider splicers for Peach Wilkins, he lets me through his locked door. He then asks me to store all of my weapons in a nearby container, and then surprise, surprise, he decides to betray me. Armed with only my plasmid powers, I had to prepare myself for one of the most difficult fights of the game. This would be the ultimate test of all my gaming skills, and would surely be almost in pot- Oh wait, he's dead already. I defeated Peach Wilkins? Wait, what? Yeah, turns out Wilkins is a wuss. Anyways, with him taken care of, our reward is our first weapon upgrade station. Again, I'll have to find all of these to fully max out all of my weapons for the Platinum. There it is. We upgraded a weapon. I still can't believe that boss just died so fast. <laughs> He's just... Man. With my first weapon upgrade now equipped, I felt just a little bit more powerful and was ready to take on the next challenge. Now, in Smuggler's Den, it was finally time to save Atlas's family. We fight our way through a ton of enemies and are just about to meet his family who are in this bathysphere when all of a sudden, Andrew Ryan blows it up right in front of us. Absolutely devastated, Atlas yells at us to escape into Arcadia. Now, here in Arcadia, the air starts to become poison around us, thanks to Andrew Ryan. Man, can this guy just leave us alone already? So, we decide to work with this woman, Julie Langford, to cleanse the air. Of course, Andrew Ryan kills her before she can help us by poisoning her in her office. But luckily, she writes her safe code on the window just before she dies. In the safe is a recipe to invent the Lazarus Vector, which is a concoction that will cleanse the air and basically prevent us from suffocating to death. We're set off on a wild goose chase into the farmer's market, killing tons of people and collecting the necessary ingredients. Once all the ingredients are collected, 
Yes, there we go. Let's get the heck out of here. Oh! We return to Julie's office and insert the vector. While waiting for the vector to work, I get overrun by a ton of splicers. Luckily, I'm able to persuade a big daddy to fight for me, and we absolutely destroy the ambushing splicers. Yes, get them, my big daddy minion. Oh my god. Yo, chill out, dude. Chill out. Once they're all defeated, we activate a switch and the Lazarus Vector is deployed, meaning we can finally breathe air again. Now, we make our way to Fort Frolic, which has a bathysphere that leads us directly to Andrew Ryan. On our way to the bathysphere, we are blocked by a man named Sander Cohen. Cohen has been torturing people here in Fort Frolic and kills a man right in front of us and then wants us to snap a photo of him for his masterpiece he is working on. Psycho. I make my way through Fort Frolic and murder specific people for Cohen and then take photos of their corpses. It's a good thing it seems Cohen doesn't care about the quality of the photo because some of these definitely came out bad. It's a terrible picture <laughs> of this guy. He's stuck in the thing. <laughs> oh man, that's great. Once all the photos are taken, I go to place them on his masterpiece, and halfway through, he sends a ton of splicers after me. Luckily, I had just found the crossbow. Do -do 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 -do. Gather round, gather one, gather all. I'll take you all out, I don't care. Goodbye. <laughs> Anyone else? You're up. Oh God. You're next. You're next. We completed Cohen's masterpiece. Yay. Where's this psychopath at? There he is. After killing half the population in Fort Frolic, Cohen apologizes and comes down to give us a gift for all of our hard work. Now, the urge to kill him is really strong here, but I actually have to keep him alive for a later set of trophies. So I unfortunately don't shoot him now and make my way out of this hellhole. Now, we have finally made it to Andrew Ryan's office. Just before we enter into his office, we come across a room with the phrase, would you kindly sprayed onto the wall. That sounds suspiciously like the phrase Atlas has been using this whole entire time to kindly ask us to do things. Either way, we make it into Andrew Ryan's office and he gives us an amazing speech. Seriously, this is probably like top five of one of my favorite video game moments of all time. Andrew Ryan uses the phrase, would you kindly, to have us murder him with a golf club, all while claiming a man chooses a slave obeys. Oh my God, dude, I forgot how brutal this was. Holy crap. Defeated Andrew Ryan. Dude, I forgot how brutal that is. Holy crap. It's been a while since I've seen that. Wow. A man chooses, a slave obeys. This game is full of just awesome one-liners, man. Crazy. So good. It's so good. With Ryan finally taken care of, we find out Atlas has been using us the entire time and is in fact Frank Fontaine. Basically, Andrew Ryan's nemesis. Fontaine has been using us this entire time for his own personal benefit, and now, since we're no use to him anymore, decides he wants us dead. It was time to escape. Oh, man. Plot twist. Oh, shoot! Wait. Time out. I need to take pictures. <laughs> time out. I need a picture. We escape into Tenenbaum's secret hideout, and she decides to work with us to help stop Fontaine from destroying all of Rapture. Now we are on a search for a way to reach Fontaine. In my search, I find myself in an apartment complex, and surprise, surprise, I come across an old friend's apartment. Here is where Sander Cohen lives, the creepy dude that had me take pictures of dead people. <laughs> because I didn't kill him earlier, I now have an opportunity for a couple of missable trophies. So now we just wait for these guys to finish up their little dance, and then we're gonna murder them in cold blood. So, you know, classic, 
Classic Bioshock. <laughs> They're dancing around the big daddy. Oh god! It's begun! Uh okay. Oh my god. Headshots. Get him, big daddy. Nice. Big daddy's going in. Big daddy is going in. Oh my god! She's dead! Big daddy, she's dead! Chill. Chill. Okay, so now. Sander Cohen should come out of the room. We should be able to kill him. He should be coming out of the room here. Oh, there he is. Murder him! Get him, Big Daddy! Yeah! Good job, buddy! Cool. So, with him dead, I'm gonna loot him. Obviously. And then we're gonna take a picture for a trophy here. Irony. Alright, cool. Now, since we didn't kill him, we can go up in his room, too. Which should give us another trophy for just entering his room. There we go. Also, there is a uh, Power of the People station. So we're gonna get another trophy for Max now. So let's say my shotgun. Three fully upgraded weapons. And that's three trophies. Back to back to back. This whole time, Frank Fontaine still had some power over me and was slowly lowering my health as I progressed through the story. I had to fight my way through a ton of enemies and find these vials to drink so that I can finally gain complete control of myself. Now you are having freedom. With that all out of the way, it was time to clean up a ton of trophies before I pressed too far into the story. After taking a ton of photos throughout the story, I finally maxed out every single enemy research in the game. Yeah, there we go. We maxed out all the possible research with all the camera photos. I don't have to take any more pictures. This is crazy. <laughs> now what am I going to do? I also found 58 total tonics in the game. I then had to go back to Fort Frolic and try to complete one of the stupidest trophies ever. See these slot machines here? I basically had to hit a jackpot on one of these. I thought this was going to be easy, but no. I sat here and repeatedly tried over and over and over again to hit the jackpot. I honestly thought I was doing something wrong because of how long this was taking me. Oh my gosh. Give it to me. Come on, come on. Yes? Please. Game. Come on. No. Dude. Oh my god. Oh my god! I did it! Yes! Finally! Oh! That sucked. That sucked so bad. Once I was finally free from my gambling addiction, I crafted every type of ammo once, and then I tried to craft a hundred total items for a trophy and ran into a weird bug. I didn't have enough materials originally to craft enough items, which sucked. So I just reloaded my save and decided to craft stuff I needed for my journey. As I was doing this, the trophy popped, so I guess it just tracks through PlayStation and not the actual game. Very weird, but it wouldn't be the last weird bug I'd run into. I then had to backtrack and buy all of the plasmid and tonic slot upgrades so I can fully max out my character. There we go, I maxed out all tracks. So I got all these slots for all my tonics and plasmids. Now, back on the hunt for Fontaine, I found my last weapon upgrade and maxed out all of my weapons completely. All right, this should be the last weapon upgrade I need right here. This is it. Weapon specialist, we upgraded all of our weapons to max. Feels good, man. Feels good, man. And finally, only one big daddy stood in my way to have completely saved every little sister in the game. Yeah! Dealt with every little sister in the game. Nice. Oh my god, I killed all the big daddies. But I needed to. Holy crap. The incendiary bolts absolutely rule. Oh! Oh god! 
I was so close now to finally fighting Fontaine. My last step was to turn myself into a big daddy so that I could make it past a series of locked doors that only little sisters could go through. Once I became a big daddy, I would be able to escort a little sister through those doors and reach Fontaine. I needed to find all the necessary suit parts to become a big daddy. In my search, I found the last of the audio logs. I collected 122 of these things. Still not as bad as Riddler trophies. <laughs> All right, this should be the last audio log here, thankfully. Hopefully no more collectibles. There we go, historian. There's so many of these collectibles, <laughs> but we did it. With that finish, all I was missing was my big daddy boots and the transformation would be complete. Yes. I am the big daddy. Look at us. Twinsies. <laughs> I now had to escort this little demon child through a long series of fights while she slowly extracted Adam out of some dead corpses. You know, just a normal Sunday afternoon here in Rapture. Once I made it through this crazy long escort sequence, the little girl was tuckered out and wanted to take a nap. She climbs into her hidey hole and a different child hands me an atom harvesting tool. With this tool, I was now ready to fight Fontaine. Now, before I fought Fontaine, I decided to save my game here and just do all the DLC real quick. I'm not going to talk about the DLC too much as I didn't really enjoy it, but I wanted that 100% for my trophies. So I knocked it out real quick. Once I was done with the DLC, I loaded my main game save and immediately noticed an almost run ending bug. Because I played the DLC on normal difficulty, when I switched back, my difficulty setting was now on normal instead of survivor, which I've been playing on this whole time for a very specific trophy. Naturally, I was freaking out and thought I was going to have to do a whole new playthrough. But luckily, I was able to use this game's bugginess to my advantage. To fix the problem, I loaded a new game on Survivor, and as soon as I gained control of my character, I loaded up my old save file. This fortunately reverted my difficulty back to Survivor and saved the run. It sucks that I had to resort to a bug to fix a bug, but it is what it is, and I think this even glitched out some trophies from popping, which you'll see later. Anyways, with the crisis averted and my game back on Survivor difficulty, it was time to defeat Fontaine and get the Platinum. Let's do it. I don't remember how to fight this boss at all. <laughs> I don't I don't remember what to do. We'll figure it out. Oh my god! Okay, incendiary bolts. Can I uh does shocking him work? Nope. Definitely does not work. Can I hack you? Oh my god, I can. Yes! What's this guy doing? Oh my god, he's right there. Oh god. Oh god. Yes, my little turret buddies. Yes. Attack him. Yes. Go, my little turret pals. Yeah. I do got a shot at this. Num 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 num. Yummy 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 yummy. Oh my god! Oh dude, now there's bad guys? Oh Jesus! I can't I can't tell what's happening right now. Holy crap. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Everyone calm down. Everyone calm down. Okay, uh Proximity mines, proximity mines. Nice job. You're really doing a great job there, Fontaine. <laughs> He's just standing there. Okay, well, let me just drain you. Yeah. Hey, we defeated Atlas. There it is. Yes, yes. Go, my children. Little sister savior. That's for saving all the little sisters. They offered you this the gift. platinum. It skipped the other trophies. Okay. It skipped the difficulty ones. 
there it is guys the platinum trophy yeah so these didn't pop up i also got i chose the impossible complete the game on survivor difficulty without using a vita chamber and also on hard difficulty same thing and then also just beating the game on survivor difficulty so these three trophies just didn't pop up right there that is so weird but yeah we got those and of course we got the platinum nice Bioshock is done. There we have it, guys. An absolute masterpiece of a game is finished. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like and subscribing for more. And if you want to check out more Platinum Runs, click right here. Thank you so much for watching.